Model Engineering for Beginners Part 16 Fitting a Crankshaft Driven Boiler Water Feed Pump to a Stuart 5A Steam Engine I completely rebuilt this Stuart 5A Steam Engine a while back and there is a video series funnily enough called Rebuilding a Stuart 5A or something like that Anyway what I have to do now is fit the water pump to it Fitting this boiler water feed pump is not a difficult job but it does involve drilling a couple of holes in the main casting and threading these 2BA one small problem I've just noticed, the eccentric will not fit flush up against the other eccentric because there is this nut in the way. Now I could remove it, but I don't think I want to do that because it's holding everything in place. But I will remove the excess thread and clean up the end of the nut. What I'm doing at the moment is just having a sort of a loose dummy run to get the general idea of how things are going to fit. And so far so good, everything just about lines up where I thought it would do. The part of the eccentric strap which drives the piston, which pumps the water, is slightly out of true, but I think that will be okay, it's not much at all. This is a bit of a problem though. The eccentric strap itself is damaged. This is probably just a blowhole in the casting, and it's been soldered over to make it look better. I don't know why people continue when they're making an engine if the casting is faulty. I would send the casting back. But luckily, as the engineering standard on this engine is pretty good, I turn round the eccentric strap, and now it looks fine. Over the years I've fitted and worked on water pumps on 5A engines, so I know how to do this. It's quite simple. On Stuart 5As, the main bed casting that supports the crankshaft is not vertical at its outer edges. I can show this more clearly and simply by just putting a set square on the bench, and you can clearly see that the entire side of the engine slopes, including the box bed. So what I have to do is cut away some of the metal from the mounting bracket to compensate for the slope, because I cannot have the pump sloping. It would work, but it would look terrible. After measuring a piece of steel to fit the job, I just cut it on my bandsaw. Not quite as quickly as this, it is speeded up. First of all, I cleaned up the end on my one inch belt sander. Then I tilted the table of the belt sander and passed the piece of steel back and forth many, many times. The metal got very hot and I had to quench it frequently and I also repeatedly checked the angle on the engine itself. And after quite a few attempts, grinding a little off the piece of metal, I finally got the angle right. And once the angle was correct, I used a transfer punch to transfer the position of the hole onto the piece of steel. Then I drilled it and threaded it, and it was quite hard to thread. It was very hard steel. I was quite surprised. Either that or the tap's blunt, but I don't think so. And once again, this operation took much longer to do than I'm showing on the video, so when I threaded the hole, I fitted a stud into the hole, used that as a guide, and then used the transfer punch to punch the position of the other hole, and then I drilled it, and here I'm threading the second hole. After which, I removed the temporary stud, and fitted a couple of 2BA bolts. And I'm pleased to say that both of the bolts fitted in the holes perfectly, and the bolts could be tightened by finger pressure only which at least proves that the holes are in the correct place. Time now to measure the engine and drill some more holes in the piece of steel to mount to the engine. The old saying, measure twice and cut once, is definitely good. So I'm taking my time and making sure everything is in exactly the right place. I mark the positions on the steel with a felt tip pen, and this is not a perfect way of doing it, but it's not a precision component. And this next bit is not for the faint-hearted, drilling holes in a customer's engine. If I break the drill or break the tap here, I have a severe problem, but I'm not going to do that. I'll take my time, do it right. And as before, I temporarily fitted a stud into the engine, and then I used the 3 16 drill through this 3 16 hole in the piece of steel to make a small mark on the engine bed plate, after which I used the tapping size drill, which is 5 seconds of an inch, and I tapped this hole also 2BA. I cannot stress how you must be really careful doing jobs like this. You need to be very delicate. Firm, but delicate at the same time. If you dither, you will have problems. Once I fitted the pair of studs, I had to persuade the piece of steel to go onto the studs. And once I'd fitted the nuts to the studs, I then checked the alignment of this piece of steel by using the set square down onto the bench. And everything was fine. The crankshaft is turning the water pump eccentric, the piston's going in and out, and it's ready to pump water. I'm just checking the tightness of the gland, because it did feel a little bit tight. And as I slacken off the gland, you can hear there's a slight increase in speed, and it sounds better. But this is a new pump, and it does need running in. 
Time now to connect a water supply and see what happens. And as you can see, it's pumping very well. There's always a little bit of movement of the pumps on these engines. I've never had one that's been perfectly stationary, but it doesn't seem to be an issue. And this one pumps quite well. To run the engine, to run the pump in, I put a loop in the circuit. I filled it with water, so all the pump's doing is pumping water back to itself. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.